What's happening guys? Welcome to this video. So today, a little bit something different. We're going to be working in DaVinci Resolve, but I thought I would just kind of tell you guys what my process is and how I create my videos. I have a, a pretty uh, standard process of how I go through the video. So today uh, you're going to see uh, mostly time lapses, but we'll jump in here and talk a little bit about what I'm doing. But um, we're going to be putting together a video for this guy right here. This is a BenQ light. It's actually up on my monitor here. Let me show you this real quick. Up there, it's on the on the top of my monitor up there it's for a client they send it out to me to review and try out it's awesome by the way so we need to jump in here and get this video made so when i'm starting out uh obviously i filmed everything already that's already all done now we're just going to get into editing it in resolve as i was filming the video obviously i've tried out the light for a while i formulated some opinions about it what i thought about it i uh, filmed some b-roll clips of the light itself of the little dial that's uh over here on uh, you know just how it works and what you can do with the light, how it changes color temperatures, all that kind of stuff. So I've got all my footage. I'm gonna set up my project here in Resolve and we're gonna go through and do a few passes on editing the project. So like working in any project, it's good that you keep organized, right? I've got a whole file setup system on how I keep my footage, my media, my audio, screen recordings, all that kind of stuff. I've got it all set up. It's the same for every single project. So I always know where to find everything. So that's already set up. If you're interested in that, comment down below. I'll let you know how I do that and what that setup is. Uh, but for now, let's jump into Resolve and we're gonna create a new project and get going here. All right, first step here, we're gonna go ahead and fire up DaVinci Resolve. So the way I set up Resolve, I have one database that's got all my projects in it, a couple years worth of YouTube videos. And I mean, that seems to work out fine for me. At some point I'll make a new uh, database here, but I just got one. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on new project. We're gonna create a new project. I usually name it with the date and then whatever the project is. So 2021, and usually I'll do the release date or what I think is gonna be the release date. Hoping to get this video out this week, but it might not come till next week. So uh, I'll just use next Monday's date and that should work out fine, which is December 20th. And like I already mentioned, ugh, this is what we're taking a look at, BenQ Screen Bar Plus. So that's what we're gonna put it under. Ah, I don't know if you heard that. Little uh, selling uh, some courses there from a DaVinci Resolve course. So if you're interested in that, head over to my Shopify, check that out. Okay, I got my name, go ahead and click Create. When I first set up my projects, what I wanna do is make sure that I've got everything set up from the beginning on how I want to work in my project here. So what I do is um, I actually have, if we take a look at the screen here, I actually have a bunch of presets and we'll be having these for sale if they're not out by the time you see this video they will be out soon but i've got all different frame rates and um projects in both 4k and hd a whole bunch of different presets here that you can just set up your project one click you're good to go so for me i generally edit my projects in 23.976 frames per second and i edit it in 1080 and then i'll export it in 4k but i always edit in 1080 it's easier on my computer uh, i film everything on my 5d mark 4 here in 1080 because i just don't need 4k it's just it's too too much files too big too much i don't need that much storage space right and then uh, with the 4k it's crazy so i have this set as my default you can say set as user default config so that's what davinci resolve will use every time i load up resolve it's going to use these settings and for good measure i'll just hit load on there Go ahead and hit cancel. So now that we got Resolve open, one of the first things that I do is I bring in a piece of footage that is at the frame rate that I want to use. Now I did set up my project settings, so that should be all good to go. But just to double check, I'm going to go ahead and bring up uh, my footage here and I'm just going to drag and drop it into the media pool. So I know that uh, any talking head stuff that I have off my 5D Mark IV is going to be in 23.976 now i did get a bunch of b-roll before i opened it up so that i filmed in 60 frames per second or 20 or 59.97 or whatever so that's going to be in slow-mo i don't want to bring that in first i want to bring in some of my talking head stuff first which is down at the end here so i'm just going to grab one of these drop it in and i don't get any message here in resolve because everything's already set up good and i got the frame rate that i want because i use my project presets so it's already set up but i always like to double check so now I'm just gonna grab all these files and just dump them all right into Resolve. Now I happen to bring them in in the cut tab here. For me, I don't really use the cut tab, but pretty much, pretty much never. I'm always gonna jump over into the edit tab because for me, it just works better. I, it, I got more flexibility. I'm used to working in the edit tab more than the cut. So I like working in the edit tab. So that's what I'm gonna do. So the first step is I'm gonna look through my footage. I'm gonna see what I got and I'm, I'm coming up with an idea of how do I want this video to go for this review. So. In my mind, what I want to do first is have a bunch of B-roll clips of the product itself, kind of showing what it is, 
um, maybe some of the features of it, maybe how the light works. Like the big thing with this light is that it, it angles the light. So it doesn't get in your eyes. It doesn't get on your screen, but it'll light up your desk area, which is cool. I mean, these are one of those things that like, I never thought I would even, it was never even on my radar. I never thought I'd like it, want it, use it. But once you got it, you're like, dude, dude, this thing is awesome. I'm going to put in some B-roll first. That's what I'm thinking. And then I'll get into my talking head stuff. I may need to shuffle things around, but my first pass of editing is always just to build out my A-roll stuff, right? I mean, I know I'm going to do B-roll in the beginning here, but that's like my main angle, my main stuff. So I want that to kind of come first before I start the talking head stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of lay in my clips and see what I can make happen uh, in my timeline here and just start to build the video out that way. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to put in, you know, my, my A angle, if you will, um, of everything first. And then I'll go back and we'll start finessing and tweaking it. So I'm probably just going to time lapse through all this stuff here um, just so you can kind of see, you know, the process that I go through. I'm not going to talk you through all of it. You probably don't need to know all of it. You probably don't care. But basically, that's my first step. Go through, lay down a baseline of everything uh, in the timeline, get a rough edit done, and then we'll go back and fine tune it. So let's jump into getting this guy going here. All right, so what I decided to do is I started putting in a little bit of the B-roll, and I'm like, you know what, let me see what I got for my talking head stuff. So I laid down the, the entire uh, track of the talking head stuff, made a few cuts, just did a rough edit there. I'm probably going to go back, or I will go back, actually, and I'm going to do, like, some punching in, punching out, just trying to change it up a little bit, because if it's just static shot, let's be honest, it looks kind of boring, right? So I try to punch in and out a lot just to change it up since most of the time my camera's either on a tripod or sitting here at my desk or something like that. So I also went to Artlist and picked up some music that I wanted to use that I thought kind of sounded cool, a little upbeat, you know, kind of some kind of cool stuff I could put in with that B-roll in the beginning. So I dropped that in the timeline. I'm liking that song. I'm going to go with that for now. And I'm going to start to layer in that B-roll uh, in the beginning because that's what I want to start with. Like I mentioned, layer in that B-roll and gonna try and do some speed ramping and just kind of try and make it look pretty interesting um, and something kind of cool, you know, that, that I like. So that's what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna get to that intro part, work on the B-roll a little bit. How long do I want it to be? I don't know. Uh, I'll just kind of put some clips in there and then, you know, see where I get. It's kind of trial and error, you know, and put it in there, see what I can edit up and, uh, you know, just make sure I get all of maybe the different parts and pieces of the light and kind of how it works and stuff uh, just to give somebody an idea of what the video is about and what the product is. So that's where I'm heading next. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and go do that. So like always, as a YouTuber here, I've got a million things to do in a day. So I uh, got a little edit done here. I got to go run out to the store, go get some things. And then I'll be back later uh, tonight or whatever. And I'm going to get this intro figured out. So you'll catch up with that in a second. And uh, we'll see you in a bit. Peace. All right. I'm back from doing some running around. Got me a cup of Joe. We're going to get back to editing here for about 20 minutes. Then I got to go get the kids from school. So let's get into it. <laughs> All right, another day back to the edit here. Had to uh, call quits yesterday because had some basketball practice, tennis appointment, things to do. So I did do my first pass yesterday. Went through, got all my talking head stuff squared away, and I'm happy with that. Then I went back and started working on some of that B-roll in the beginning. I'm going to go back, take another look at that, and I even started including some speed ramping and kind of doing my second pass. So put my clips in there with the first pass that I typically do, and then have been going back and adding in some speed ramping and just trying to match it up to the beat a little bit better. So now I'm going to go back, watch it again, see how that works out, and then I'm going to get into the talking head stuff and do a lot of my punching in and punching out, kind of like this. If I punch in like this, and then I punch back out. I think it just makes the video a little more interesting. So that's kind of my round two, is to go back and kind of fine tune stuff a little bit. So let's jump in, let's speed through that, and uh, we're gonna get that done. So let's do it. All right, so my initial pass there is done. I've kind of done the punch ins and punch outs. Got a good, uh, I'm gonna call it a rough draft going there. So the next thing I'm gonna do is go back and start applying some stabilization to some of these clips. Cause a lot of it, I was hand holding my camera. It's a little shaky. 
uh, the B-roll, I kind of want to smooth it out a little bit. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to apply the stabilization, run that on the clips, and then I'm going to start to add in some more B-roll on top of my talking head stuff because I've got other shots to show you different things. So I'll go ahead and add in the B-roll after I kind of stabilize some of the stuff to make sure it looks good and I'm happy with it. So that's it on the stabilization. Peace. All right, so we got our clip stabilized. I think I'm in pretty good shape here. The next thing I'm gonna do is go through, take another pass through, and now I'm gonna add in my B-roll on top of my uh, talking head stuff so that way I can get close-ups of you know the device and the parts that I'm talking about. So that's the next step. Go back through, lay some B-roll on top, try and make it a little more interesting, and that's it. That's where we're going to next. Check it out. All right, so that pass through is done. The edit is coming together here. I'm pretty happy with how things are working out. And uh, now I'm gonna go back through, see if I wanna add in any text or uh, any additional transitions or anything like that. You saw we did a little bit of fusion. I don't know if you saw while I was zipping by there, time lapsing, but uh, did a little bit of fusion there just to get a couple lines in there. Um, so the edit's coming together pretty good. I've added in a little bit more music. I also wanna add in some subscribe buttons and you know maybe that kind of stuff. Um, and then that's going to be it. I'm going to watch it through, make sure everything looks good. I didn't uh, screw anything up too bad. And then that's it. We're going to export it out, get it on uploaded to YouTube, let the client know that the video is done and ready to go. And we'll be all set here. All right, so everything's looking pretty good here. Now, as I'm passing through and checking everything out, make sure it looks good again. I noticed that once I change to uh, this angle right here that we're looking at where I'm sitting at my desk, the audio kind of changes a little bit because I'm a little farther away from the microphone that's on my camera because that's what I'm using uh, in this particular video. So I'm going to go ahead and take all my audio tracks from that angle, bump them down into another track so I can work with the audio a little bit, as well as make sure I've got my audio set up uh, for my other dialogue tracks. So now I'll have two dialogue tracks. Get that all set up. Then I'm going to go through and color grade. Color grading is usually the last step that I'll do because it always kind of box things down, slows it down anyway. So I usually do that at the very end. And uh, that's it. That's it. We're going to do our little audio editing, our color grading. And uh, that should be it. That should be a wrap for this video. So speed on through that. And here we go. All right, guys, that wraps up the process here of how I would create a video, in this case, a product video for BenQ and their screen bar light that goes on top of your monitor. So I do do a couple passes through. I hope that was helpful for you guys to see kind of how I do it. And the way I look at it is you kind of want to wear one hat at a time, right? I don't want to do everything all at once because the project kind of evolves, right? Every video I make, it's going to be a little bit different. You know, I got to kind of see how the flow is. I've got my idea of, you know, what I want it to be. I filmed it, you know, that way so that it would kind of get the idea across of what I initially thought of. But when I'm editing it, you can make a lot of changes. You can really, you know, make it something unique and add some cool things into it. And it kind of evolves. It always evolves for me anyway. So I hope this was helpful and showing you guys just how I go through and edit it. Um, maybe if you're interested, I can do this again sometime. Let me know. Comment below if you're interested in more details about my process. I know I sped through a lot of the editing and just kind of gave you high level stuff of kind of what I was doing and how I was doing it. So if you guys found this interesting, give it a thumbs up for me. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Peace.